everyone, Tim with Collect Jurassic here with a very special review on the channel. Today we're doing our first ever book review. Yes, we're usually doing toys and collectibles, but this is something really special. This is the 30th anniversary edition of the Jurassic Park novel by Michael Crichton. Uh, the book that started it all, and this edition of it is so cool that I had to review it on the channel. A huge shout out to Folio Society, who creates this edition, um, for sending me this book in order to share it with everyone today. You're going to see just how awesome this is. Uh, you can definitely judge this book by its cover and what's inside, because there are some illustrations as well, which I will get into. Um, but yeah, this book is so cool. Uh, you know, I have other versions of the Jurassic Park book, obviously, in my collection. A lot of this stuff is, uh, you know, movie-centric with a lot of the branding on it. So as soon as the movie kind of, uh, you know, got really popular, we, we kind of quit seeing original takes on um, on the Jurassic Park sort of, like, branding and everything. So that's what's really cool about this new edition that just came out is that, you know, it kind of brings something new to the table while still sort of having some recognizable uh, Jurassic Park imagery. But, um, yeah, these are just a couple other versions of the book I have my edition from when I was a kid is so worn out that the cover fell out, so I don't even have it in my collection anymore. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to get a new one to read through because um, th there's obviously some really cool stuff going on with this one again. So yeah, this is from the Folio Society. Uh, they are a like publishing company that does uh, cool editions of all kinds of books, but obviously the Jurassic Park book is what we want to look at. Um, the book itself comes with a slip case that you can actually put the book in um, and to, to kind of keep protected on your shelf. Uh, it has this cool, like, um, sort of, like, scale, dinosaur scale print on it. Uh, it's really cool. It goes all the way around. So kind of a nice little high-end touch for you there. Um, and then, yeah, the book kind of slides in, and you can see the binding with Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park, Folio Society. Uh, so the font they used is sort of an original font, original typography, um, but it's close enough to the Jurassic Park font that... Uh, it actually still looks, um, you know, really cool. That's what I like about this whole thing is that even though it's kind of its own original novel take on Jurassic, uh, it definitely picks up a lot of the successful things from the film and kind of puts a new spin on them. So you can see the cover itself. We have two Velociraptors here. Um, they're definitely looking like a little bit like Jurassic Park Velociraptors, right? The coloration uh, uh, matches what's in the actual book, the description, not the film. You can also see a little bit of plumage up here, which is always cool to see with Jurassic. It's a wraparound um, print. So on the back, you can see uh, another raptor back here. It looks like he's trying to eat some, or he's trying to sniff a footprint. So um, we also have like a little... Um, like a button here with a date on it. So all this stuff is just like little hints from the book. Um, it's been about a year since I've read the book, so forgive me if I don't remember every detail, but there's also um, a little fence uh, visible here and you can actually see they use the 10,000 volt thing from the movies. So there's kind of some nice little movie touches in here as well. So the book itself, obviously I'm not gonna go ahead and, and read you every page of it. Um, but, you know, it's all here. It's got all of the diagrams from Crichton for the, um, you know, the this little deal, the fr the fractal on, on every chapter, like the original one does. And it also has um, uh, like a, a table of contents too, which we'll get to. But let me start kind of from the beginning. And again, don't be worried. I'm not going to read you this entire book. Um, but you can see that the inside does have some another nice illustration here. That would be the broken egg um, with little tiny baby Velociraptor footprints walking away. Um, very cool. I, I think the back is the exact same thing. So we all know that scene from the movie. And of course, it's um, a part of it is in the book as well. But flipping through to the in first sort of printed spread, you get this nice black and white drawing um, that, you know, says the illustrations by Vector That Fox, incredible illustrator. I mean, you already saw on the front cover. I mean, um, this person uh, just did this so good, like just brilliantly executed. Um, I, that, that perfect mix between like original novel concepts and sort of what we have grown to love about the film. You can see this nice vista here with some uh, large herbivores grazing, um, sort of a a, uh, a little bit rougher Welcome to Jurassic Park sign. Um, not not so fancy with the logo and everything, but nice little opening spread. And then you also have a table of contents as well as where the illustrations are. So it looks like we have, um, oh, it even, it even kind of um, pulls out quotes that sort of uh, inspire the, uh, the illustrations you see. So that first one um, that we just saw on the front, 
is actually inspired by a quote from the film, or a quote from the book, which is, Over the Path, a crude, hand-painted sign read, Welcome to Jurassic Park. So yeah, that's definitely a, uh, a crude, hand-painted sign. So nice little touch there. And then we have, um, well, we can go through and look at all the other illustrations too, because that's kind of the main thing I wanted to cover in this review. I'm not, again, I'm not going to read the book, but I think we all are really anxious to see the illustrations in this beautiful edition of the book. Um, so we can go to page 40 which looks like it's, let's see, it's back here. And we have, oh, this is a great scene. Terrifying scene. Probably one of the darkest scenes in the novels and films combined, which is, um, yeah, I'll read the quote, around the rim of the bassinet, three dark green lizards crouch like gargoyles. So we know they're not gargoyles. They are compsognathuses, and they are literally uh, eating a baby, which is pretty disturbing. Um, you can see in the illustration detail, like they even have little bits of meat on them. I know in the, 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 the actual written word, they have like blood on their noses too so pretty dark all illuminated by a flashlight i love the shadows in the background um that's just really really cool um it's just yeah it's just a, a kind of a, a creepy vibe they got here it feels very survival horror you got a storm on the outside too so and that's our first illustration in quite a dark one um, but oh, I mean, just to have this scene sort of come to life, you know, it's, if you've read the book, it's definitely in your head and disturbing, but seeing an artist take on it on kind of, kind of adds to the terror. Um, our next, uh, illustration is on page 128. So we'll skip ahead a couple pages to that. Ah, and we have the the lab. I actually don't think I've seen this illustration before. I know a lot of these um, marketing materials for the Folio Society edition were online, but um, you could kind of get a sneak peek. But I haven't seen this one. Looks like we got Dr. Wu working in the lab. Um, it says the eggs were all moving gently rocking and when if you read the novel you know that it's in like this like really dimly lit like red lit room with all of this um like uh, uh i guess not fog but like mist covering all the eggs it's, it's very well described in the book and they've obviously brought that to life here we can see stegosaurus and triceratops um sort of like uh batch numbers on there and then a little hatching egg in the foreground i kind of like for both of these um first illustrations how we sort of have like a hand in the foreground see how there's like the hand of the the um holding the egg hand holding the flashlight so kind of like a consistent perspective you can see all the scientists too like uh it's busy just sort of like the scene in the film um with a lot of scientists going in and out so um that that's that's a fresh illustration and then uh we can head to the next one on page 161 which is right here ah, i love this one too again with that sort of foreground idea with you know we have characters in the foreground and then something of interest in the background this is the sighting of the dilophosaurus this is probably uh you know going through this probably my favorite illustration because what you do is you get a nice look at that um alternate coloration of the dilophosaurus that wasn't in the film this like bright yellow and the red crest with the leopard spots um i always loved reading about this version of the dilophosaurus in the book so having an artist rendition of it um you know is, is really special you got i think it's tim maybe in the in the front looking at him. I'm not sure. Um, you yeah, know, looking across the river at the Dilophosaurus, uh, and it looks awesome. Still kind of looks like a Jurassic Dilophosaurus, um, with those colorations. You can't see the frill here, but, um, beautiful, beautiful illustration. Um, then we also have page 209, which we can flip through right here. Oh yeah, it's another iconic scene from the film, um, but in the uh, in the novel too, the T Rex attacking the tour vehicles. Uh, this T Rex looks great. It's raining. You got the again that foreground and background sort of idea here with the uh, totally destroyed car, glass all over the seats, and the T Rex peering inside. Um, somehow, you know, uh, faithful to the film, but uh, sort of a unique take from the novel that feels. Uh, a little bit more terrifying, honestly, because there's no light on the T-Rex. It's just all dark. Uh, you can see the water running off of his snout, or, or her snout, rather. Um, a lot of cool detail here. Very, very nice. Uh, and then next up, we have ch -ch -ch -ch, page 320. So, yeah, this kind of brings us through the entire book. Um, you know, hitting all the major beats, the visual beats. Obviously, there's a lot more action than in this book than just the illustrations. Um, 
But here is page 320. We have a nice shot of the aviary, which wasn't in the film at all. So um, in the book, it's definitely an exciting thing to read through and uh, an exciting thing to see in uh, illustrated form. So we have Tim uh, and Lex and Grant looking up at these flying uh, pteranodons. Uh, I can't remember what species they're supposed to be. I thought they were just supposed to be pteranodons. Um, but you can see them diving at them. You can see the, the shadow of the framework of the aviary on the ground. And you can also see all of the guan or uh you know pterodactyl poop all over the the structure too which is mentioned in the book so they brought all that to life here which is really really cool um and this is obviously not like a film species um or at least this uh this sort of rendition of it doesn't look anything like we've seen in the film it actually looks more faithful i love the little teeth pointing out on the beak too so um this is a cool one because again it's showing something that's not in the film I, let me just read that quote of uh of what it's supposed to be here he looked up and saw an enormous dark shape gliding above them. So that's what this is supposed to be. Then our final illustration is on page 368. So let me hop to that one. Oops, a little too far. We have uh, some night vision with that foreground and background. The text is the dinosaur was now just a few feet away from him. So this is obviously the kitchen scene brought to life uh, in novel form. Uh, it looks like he's using the night vision goggles from the tour vehicle. Um, that's something that happened in the book. You can see his hand and like the outline of the goggles, but there's the raptor. I think it's sniffing some food or something. Got that plumage again on its head that looks really, really cool. Um, just enough to be a Jurassic Park raptor, but just different enough to be faithful to the novel. Um, really, really cool. And, and I love how they did that sort of illustrative style with the background and foreground for every shot. It really is feels more immersive than just, you know, a bunch of random illustrations. They all kind of have a point of view, which helps when you're reading a novel, you kind of get inside these characters' heads. So, um, you know, that illustrative style really lends itself to it. Um, but that's every illustration in this book. Of course, uh, in between the illustrations, there's plenty of incredible words. Um, if you haven't read the Jurassic Park novel, you really, really should. It's um, I'm not going to say it's better than the book or, or better than the film or the, or the film is better or whatever. It's its own thing, and it's an incredible piece of like Jurassic uh, storytelling. So you should definitely check it out. And if you were so inclined, this edition is a great way to get started. Um, this is available exclusively through Folio Society since they're the ones creating it. Um, I'll go ahead and put the link to the book um, in the YouTube caption if you want to check it out. But yeah, I mean, I, I love this thing. It's a great, unique piece to the collection for sure. Um, I don't get a lot of novel-centric stuff. Uh, there really isn't a lot of it besides the, you know, like the books themselves that I already kind of mentioned. Um, so if you're going to collect books, this is like the one to get. I just... I'm just so stoked about this. And again, I'm very grateful to, for, to Folio Society for sending me a copy to share. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it for today. So um, again, I'm Tim with Collect Jurassic. Please go ahead and subscribe if you like to, uh, you know, see more reviews of Jurassic stuff. Well, maybe not books, but more toys and collectibles. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.